everyone. So today we're going to kind of wrap up our uh, Lecture 6, Nucleation and Growth and Oswald Ripening uh, Lecture Review uh, from the stuff that we covered uh, basically before this change to remote teaching. So, so far we've dealt with uh, basically how will our system evolve when we have a curve. Then we went to kind of these 2D weird kind of grain structures. That's a pretty awful drawing. Uh, Again, that's why I use kind of my presentation skills. That's even worse. But anyways, you get the point. So we went from that curve and looking at the change in chemical potential, looking at it from a uh, basically change in chemical potential perspective, from a stress perspective, from a flux perspective. We also figured out our kind of 2D grain uh, growth. So we saw that the average grain size scales as T to the 1 half. And we have our kind of M parameter in there that has that uh, kind of exponential uh, inverse Arrhenius relationship with T over that T parameter uh, in there as well. And we had that von Neumann principle, so the N equals 6, to figure out if grains will grow, shrink, or stay the same. So we've dealt all now with uh, basically 2D phenomenon. So we are now going to move up in dimensionality into uh, 3D, specifically with Oswald ripening and coarsening. So Remember, uh, don't believe everything I say. I tricked you guys. I said that Oswald was from uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. That is not the same Oswald ripening. Uh, so, but again, we want to kind of figure out uh, this question of, all right, how do 3D spheres or particles precipitate from solution? How will they grow? So let's take a look at kind of what we think from our intuition might happen. Because again, this is still based on your change in chemical potential, which is related to obviously our kappa, our curvature, which is for a sphere, 2 over R. So let's say from my liquid solution, I precipitate spherical particles. And let's say I, I'm going to try to use some different colors here. Let's see if this works. So I have a big particle there. I have a pretty small particle there. I have a huge one. Another kind of size here, here, here. Lots of precipitate particles. You know, you, you get the picture here. Uh, small particles, large particles, tiny ones, here, here, all over the place. So Let's say that on average, let's say my average particle size was, and this will be helpful for your problem set. Let's say this is my average particle size here. Now, what is our intuition for which particles will grow and which particles will shrink? So, we've always said, uh, you know, we've kind of previously said that based on curvature, your uh, chemical potential grows, right? So, our curvature is this. So, if I have, and let's actually, let's take a step back. So, if I have a, a marble, does that have high curvature or low curvature related to uh, basically the earth, right? So, again, the earth is not flat. Don't believe what you uh, read on YouTube videos or see on YouTube videos except for me. The earth is not flat. It has curvature. But why do people think that, you know, why is it, you know, why did this theory even come about? Well, we know what's the radius of our earth. The radius of curvature of the Earth. It's gigantic, right? Huge. So our curvature is going to be extremely, extremely low, right? Compared to a tiny, you know, marble, which this could be, you know, millimeters, right? So the curvature of a marble has much higher curvature. So if the marble, so this is my marble. This is my Earth, not drawn to scale. Uh, if this is my marble, this is my Earth, which has a higher chemical potential. We know that the radius, chemical potential for a sphere, chemical potential of a plate, plus 2 gamma B bar kappa, right? Which has a larger chemical potential? The marble, because it has a lower radius. The Earth has a lower chemical potential. So, again, in this crazy scenario, mass is going to go down flow from high chemical potential to low chemical potential. So in this scenario, this big particle here Mass was going to want to flow from these small particles to the big particles. So what we need to figure out is, in this Oswald ripening solution, which particles are going to grow, which particles are going to shrink, and again, how will the uh, average particle size, so we're going to uh, give these spheres basically a radius, A. So how will A scale with time again? What is this exponent? And what are the factors that, again, can increase or decrease uh, kind of the speed at which particles will grow or shrink? So that's our scene phenomenon. Very similar to uh, your 2D grain growth, but you're going to see some different complications. So uh, again, you can kind of read through the notes. Uh, 
small particles, higher chemical potentials than large particles, exactly what our intuition says. So now it goes through, uh, again, in this lecture, <laughs> or this, this actually, in this lecture, there's a lots of derivations, right? But that's the key insight I just want you to kind of come about. The marble has higher chemical potential, Earth has lower chemical, chemical potential due to that radius of curvature. Mass is going to flow from small particles to large particles. Large particles or large precipitates, large spheres will grow at the expense of small particles. So you can read through this, uh, and as we did in class, this is a whole huge kind of derivation uh, kind of showing this. Uh, there's some really good insight to be gained uh, in this expression. One of this equation, uh, this equation here is really powerful to me. Um, this is basically looking at the concentration uh, is going to vary. The concentration around a particle will vary as a function of the size of the particles. So this A is, again, the radius of your sphere. Uh, so it's your, basically here's your sphere. That's your radius. A. Again, confusing. Why don't we use R because there's so many R's, you know, we want to kind of uh, stay around it. This equation here says that particles that are small will be surrounded by rich A liquid. Particles that are large will be surrounded by liquid poor A. So, again, the concentration varies as a function of the size of your particles because, again, materials either coming in towards A or material is leaving your particles. So big particles, particle, uh, material is going to kind of diffuse in because, again, low chemical potential, high chemical potential, small particles, it's going to leave those uh, materials. So uh, that's just an aside. Again, you could read through these notes, uh, kind of going through this derivation. There's lots of good insight to be gained, um, and we kind of talked about that already in class uh, before, kind of, again, our remote teaching session. There's even more derivations and the concentration, uh, rate of change. But the key equation, what I want you all to focus on, because, uh, again, you could gain a lot of insight into that derivation. I really highly encourage you to do so just to kind of really understand this topic. But Oswald ripening comes down to this extremely fundamental, beautiful equation, number 54 here. I love this equation. It's extremely, extremely, extremely powerful. So what this equation is saying is the rate of change. So how fast our sphere will grow or shrink is dependent upon this right here. So let's break this down. So C naught is just your initial concentration. That is going to be a constant. Again, given for a given material. Same thing uh, essentially for uh, your diffusivity is going to be fixed with, uh, we'll come back to diffusivity. B bar, same thing. Uh, gamma SL is just the difference between the solid and liquid, your surface tension. Again, constant, constant. You know, R, your gas constant, definitely constant. Now, what is going to change? So we'll come back to this later, but these are all constants. These are all typically going to be positive. These are all positive values too. D is also positive. And we'll come back to diffusivity in a second. So, what is going to determine whether dA dt, if it's greater than zero or if it's less than zero? Specifically, for what size of the particles? So let's look at what controls. So we know that this, the size of your particle has to be a positive, right? So A has to be greater than or equal to zero, at least, you know. Uh, so what we have to do here, the only thing that could change the sign of this expression is in here. So let's. What happens if my a? So the a is what we're plugging. Let's say my particle size a is less than a bar. So what are we going to do? Well, let's take a look. All right. So if my a is less than a bar, so let's say that uh, a is equal to ten micrometers, and a bar is equal to a hundred micrometers. What is 1 over 10 minus 1 over 100? Which is larger? Or is this, is this a positive or negative value? Well, it's positive, right? So this here will be positive, the result. I'm not going to do the math out. <laughs> but if this is positive, and we know that all these values in here are also positive, then your growth rate is negative. So we know that when A is less than A bar, let me actually write it here. When A is less than A bar, when our particle size is smaller than the A bar is your average particle size. So A bar is the average particle size in your system. So again, remember you have like this, lots of different size particles. 
but a bar is just the average of the average of all those particles in your system. So if a is less than a bar, PADT is less than zero. And that makes sense just from our intuition, right? The marble has the higher chemical potential and it gave materials to the earth in this crazy example that, that I've made up on the spot. Uh, so those particles will shrink. Small particles will shrink at the expense of large particles. Let's prove that the other way. So let me erase. I'm going to keep that. Uh, I'm going to say now, let me do this, 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 this. So now let's say, let's say the opposite is true. Let's say my A is 100 micrometers, so, and my A bar is that. So now, 1 over 100 minus 1 over 10, this value here is going to be negative. This value is always positive, so now, let me erase one time because it's getting a little bit messy in here. Now we can see in this equation that when A is greater than A bar, our DADT is greater than zero. And again, makes sense from our intuition, uh, based on curvature. Large particles will grow at the expense uh, of smaller particles. So you can kind of, uh, it's explained, let's see, you can explain it again in the text here, will shrink, particles that are larger will grow. That's all we're kind of, but again, that's the beauty of this expression. It all comes down to what is the sign in here. So I'm going to now erase a lot of this stuff. Keep this in mind. Because now, again, what are we trying to find here? We want, you know, this is great because it tells us, okay, which particles will grow, which particles will shrink. But as we kind of mentioned, I shouldn't have erased that. You all know my style. I erase things before they should be erased. Um, we are trying to figure out how will that average particle size A, or how will our particle size A scale with time, right? So previously, this is what we're looking for. We want, how is A going to scale in time. What is this exponent here? And what can we do to control that? Well, previously for our, we had this nice expression for the 2D grain growth, right? Where we had this, and then there's some expression, and we could easily, you know, uh, I think it was something over our bar. We could separate variables and do this uh, kind of equation. Very simple, straightforward math. Can we integrate this expression here? Can we separate variables? The answer is no, because you can see the A's are everywhere. So if we separate the variables, this A multiplies everything in here. If we separate A's, we're left with nothing on the other side, and it doesn't work. So you have to solve this expression numerically. And what I mean by that is, for every single particle that we have, you know, and you could have millions of precipitate particles in your solution. For every single particle, I have to take particle one, and I need to plug in to this expression, see what the growth rate, so I need to figure out for particle one, so particle one, I need to figure out what is that DADT, sorry. For particle two, what is that DADT, and again, and again, all the way to, you know, could be a million, as I mentioned. That is really, 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 really difficult, uh, and hard to work with. So, what we do is we make some assumption. Again, it's just not, not practical because you have to, and that's for a one single time step. So you have to figure out what is the growth rate for one time step and then do that for, you know, all time. So that is really, really difficult to do. So we are going to make an assumption. We are going to say uh, that the particle size, uh, that basically the system evolves or is dominated by by the maximum growth rate. So the particles that grow the fastest, sorry for this handwriting, the particles that grow the fastest will dominate the behavior. So again, I should have just said that. Uh, <laughs> so how do we find which particles grow the fastest? How do we find any maximum? Well, all we do, if we want to find a maximum, you just take a derivative. So if I want to find the maximum in the growth rate, I'm going to take the derivative with respect of this, with respect to A, and set it equal to zero. And again, plug that into Mathematica, you could solve that, and you find that the particle size that 
So the fastest growing particle size is this. Growing particle size is when your particle size equals twice the average particle size. So A max, or like our A fastest growing, is twice the average particle size here. So, show nicer in my LaTeX. So, that's it. Part, that's, that is the particle size that will grow the fastest. So, what we then can do, if we want an expression, if, if we say, okay, the fastest growing particle size is gonna dominate the behavior, we're just gonna plug that back in to kind of this expression here, and then do our separation of variables. So you could kind of go through these notes, again, in the OER as well, you can kind of look through this. You could go through this, the rest of this derivation, and you just plug that back in for A max, you substitute in for A max, and we get this expression here, where now we can separate variables and integrate. We can do this now because you just separate, move that over, and you're still left with the values here. So once you do that integration, you're left with this expression here, and we see that the average particle size scales as t to now the one-third. So again, different from our average uh, 2D grain growth, which scaled as t to the half. So that is our solution. So that's the difference between 2D and 3D grain growth. Now like we did for 2D grain growth, what parameters can we do to change how fast that particle grows? Well, again, C0, we said that's a constant, right? R is a constant. 4, don't, don't care. B bar, don't care. Gamma, don't care. So we're left with, we know that we could change T, right? So that's definitely a parameter we play with. What about D? Well, if you remember back to lecture uh, 4, we know that the diffusivity can be expressed like this in terms of temperature, erroneously. Activation energy over KT. Again, this is fixed, this is fixed, this is fixed. So again, we had this exponential, this erroneous relationship with temperature, again, just like we had for the 2D grain growth. So again, via temperature, we can control how fast or how slow these particles evolve in time. So this is our key knob. This is our key parameter that we could kind of play around with and figure out, okay, what's happening essentially in this system? Or how can we control this system? So that's kind of the key aspect that you're, uh, we're gonna kind of look at, uh, uh, or basically as engineers, that is the control that we have available to us. So uh, that's basically it, uh, or actually, you know, so now we could kind of play around, uh, we could do one quick example. I really like this problem. So if, ooh, let me give away the solution. You know, I do that quite often. So if I gave you this curve, so right here, this is the growth rate as a function of uh, particle size, A. So these are three uh, different systems. So, but I, if I were to ask you, what is A bar for my red, blue, and green curve? Or if I were to ask you, which has the highest, like, what has the highest average grain, or uh, sorry, um, precipitate size? So rank. So rank, like, largest A bar. Or actually, give me the quantitative answer. Well, we know that when we set da dt, and we take the derivative with respect to A, we set it equal to zero, we know that that answer will be when this is equal to 2A bar. So, where's the maximum on these curves? Well, here's the maximum here, here's the maximum here, and approximately here's the maximum here. So if I want to figure out what is the average particle size for each of these systems, all I do is just see where that intersects the x-axis, here, and then approximately here. So we can see this, again, now that intersection here, this intersects, that the value is equal to 2a bar. So you have to, wherever that intersection is, like let's say this is, for example, it's not, but 0001 is equal to 2a. So my a bar is this divided by 2. So I can solve for each of these, val for each of these systems, what is the average uh, particle size of my system? So I know that green is the largest, then blue, and then red. 
just by looking at that curve and by knowing this derivation, knowing that the fastest growing particle size is equal to 2a bar, and that's where this maximum occurs on this curve. So again, this is a nice type of you know, problem set or exam type problem. And again, uh, it's, it's all this factor, you know, it's one of the key thing, findings of volatile ripening. The fastest growing particle size is twice the average. So you can see in the problem set, I give you a you know, similar problem to what we started with today, which was a bunch, bunch of different particle sizes. Which ones will grow? Which ones will shrink? It depends on A bar. So if A is less than A bar, shrink. So DA, DDT is less than zero. If A is greater than A bar, DA, DT is greater than zero. So I hope that helps you on the problem set. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please be sure to uh, kind of uh, email me uh, or, again, leave uh, comments below or, or whatever you want, <laughs> wherever you want to do to contact me. Uh, and, again, please be safe out there. Uh, and let me know if you have any questions or if you need any more worked examples. I'll be happy to do so. Thanks. Uh, have a great day.